you have walked the wilds of Kakabad, through Kare and the spiteful backlands, all the way into Mampang. You have survived traps, thieves, serpents and vengeful gods, and now it is here, the crown of kings. It is said the crown was never forged, only found, by Kalana the Reformer, a lowly foot soldier who became emperor of the eastern world. Such is the power of the crown. The air around it crackles with influence. Let's wait. The crown sits unguarded on a pedestal of light. After so many hardships, can it really be so simple? Or is this yet another deception? Sure enough, as soon as you think it, the image of the crown begins to flicker. You turn about to see something approach it. Approaching. It's a trap! And startle yourself awake. You are alone, exhausted, in the little hut in the outpost settlement. Your unimaginable journey is not even a single step begun. Welcome, everyone, to my brand new Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy to have you here as I finally get to play this. I, I'm so hyped! I'm so hyped for this! I I've been waiting for the last chapter to finally come out, and a few days ago it did. This is the part one. This is Sorcery Part One. I have links for you down below in the description. This game is by Inkle, as you said, uh, as you saw, and of course it's based on the books by Steve Jackson. If you don't know who Steve Jackson is, well, he and a another man called Ian Livingston, they founded a. Uh, well, they founded a series called Fighting Fantasy, and uh, Fighting Fantasy books, which are basically choose your own adventure sort of thing, uh, style book, uh, they were probably my first introduction to role-playing games in general. I was 10 years old, I think, um, when uh, I first played The Forest of Doom, that was written by Ian Livingston himself, um, and I enjoyed that so much, it was amazing, and I loved it from the be beginning, and I actually bought a, a few probably a, more than a dozen other books from the series but um, it's been a long long time since I've played one of those one of those things and uh, sorcery with an exclamation mark at the end um, is uh, the computer uh, adaptation of the books uh, of sorcery I believe I never seen the books uh, of uh, the, of this particular mythos of this particular tale and uh, this is all brand new to me and uh, well I don't know if it's brand new to you but well if it is you're gonna get to see it with me of course games like this feature a, a, a very very good amount of choice and consequence in like branching paths and especially later later down the line not just in this game but in the later parts there are four parts uh, to uh, to this uh, to this saga and the third and fourth uh, to my knowledge, are very, very free and more open world. Now, the gameplay is very simple. Usually, it's it revolves around reading text and making your choices, which is, when it all boils down to it, what you really want. You just you want to see what things are, and you want to make your choice, and that's what matters. There's also combat. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and I'm not going to explain too much right now, because the game kind of does a very good job at explaining how things go. So, here we are. This is our character. It is sunrise. You dress breakfast on bread and goat's milk and collect the pack and sword from your uh, from beside your bed. Let's test the blade. You pause the test blade against your thumb. The blacksmith has done well. The edge is kin and draws a narrow line of blood. Outside the hut, you hear the outpost settlement stirring into life. Let's pray for good luck, because gods, gods and mythos, mysticism and all the sorts of magical things, they exist in worlds like this, so yeah. Taking a moment more, you close your eyes and raise a prayer to your spirit guide. Actually, yeah, the, the spirit guide, basically, it's uh, it's like the angel, the guardian angel sort of thing. From what I know, I still haven't played or seen too much of uh, sorceries to know how that will go, but we have just prayed to it. This morning, it has the form of a panther. But what will it become once your journey truly begins? A great calm descends on you. That's good. It's time to go. Time then to the part. You lift back the flap of the hut and step into the early morning sunshine. And here we are. We're going to draw our path. We can do a drunk path if we want, or we can draw our path very neatly towards the outpost settlement over there. That's our hut, I suppose. And here we go. Eyes follow you as you leave the hut and walk towards the great Shamutanti wall. The frontiers people of this tiny settlement are well aware of your mission. Let's, uh... Let's greet them. 
You turn to them and bow. Some smile in reply but are too afraid to approach. Others make gestures of protection. You are going beyond the wall, so they believe you to be cursed. A man is waiting on the path to the Cantopani Gate, the final doorway between Anal Analand and the wilds of Kakabad. You recognize the sergeant of the Sightmaster Warriors. He holds out his hand. And there he is. He's actually our friend, so let's, let's be nice. Greetings, sergeant. Um, he touches his forehead with two fingers. You are almost ready, he says. I have for you a gift from the king. Twenty-four gold pieces. It is all we can spare this time. He holds out a pouch. Why would I refuse it? I need money. Money is very, very important. I suppose I never... Actually, I, I did a test run just to see if the recording was working properly and all that. Uh, so, uh, I did this. I took it. I mean, I guess I could understand taking just half of it, like, you know giving him a bribe, but I'm not sure if we're gonna meet this guy again, so let's just take it. You accept the gift graci graciously. Thank you, I say. You should buy some supplies before you pass the wall, the sergeant says, and you must collect your spellbook if you wish magic to aid you. Finally, should you wish to practice practice your swordplay, I will go one last round with you. And he points with his staff towards the training ground. Yes, that's actually gonna be a good thing. Uh, we're gonna get... Let's buy ourselves some rations. Now, in my test run, I did a bad thing, I suppose. Uh, and I'll tell you what that bad thing is. You can always rewind. I'm going to try and rewind as little as possible. Uh, and I'll tell you about it in a little bit. But uh, So, basically, the small traders in the settlement supply the Sight Master Warriors with weapons, armor, food, and clothing. You go over with the sergeant to a staff uh, stall selling flatbreads and cheese. Which is amazing, because I love bread and I love cheese. Two gold pieces per ration, the owner says. Uh, now, rations, basically, each day you consume one ration, I believe, and if you don't, you lose stamina, and I think each day you pass without food, you lose four stamina, if I'm not mistaken, and to regain that, you need to consume extra rations, or something like that, I guess we'll find out later, but rations are important, and they're not that, they're not that expensive, that said, my initial reaction is to haggle. Uh, do you know who I am? I am Analan's great hero, you tell him. The man looks uncomfortable. I, I know that. But I have to feed my family today, whatever, whatever happens to the crown. Hmm. Well, I could say buy nothing, and what happens there is, uh, I say, then your still children will starve today. But no, let's not be. Let's not be jerks for right now. I think I'm gonna need the rations, and uh, 20 gold should be okay. Let's let's see how, 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 those, how all that goes. I could buy more, but let's buy two rations right now. You hand over your coins and the man places two rations carefully into your pack. You must be sure you eat every day or you will suffer, the sergeant tells you, standing at your side. Eating more will give you extra strength, but it is not necessary. Yep, let's check the contents of the pack using the items on the bottom of the map. Yes, indeed. So, we go into here. Uh, and I got rations. Mmm. Two meals. I don't want to eat. Um, ooh, soundtrack. Came out of nowhere. We got treasure. It's our gold. 20 gold pieces. That's pretty good. And we got weapons as well. We only have a sword. The game doesn't really do tell you anything else. Man, that looks appetizing. It really does. Mm. Okay, so let's go to the training grounds. Let's draw the path over there. And later we're going to go over there and get our magic book. You walk, in, uh, walk with a sergeant to the training ground. And he wraps the base of his staff in leather. Let's ready my sword. To begin, the sergeant says, we will practice the stances. First, defend yourself against me. So, all you need to do is just click the fan right there. The Sightmaster is power a powerful enemy, but defending by defending, you will receive the minimum damage from any attacks he makes. The Sightmaster Sergeant defends himself as well. The round is a stalemate. My next attack will be one of my strongest, he declares. If you can prefer, perform a full attack, you may overpower me, but otherwise, you would best defend yourself. Now, you can overpower him at this point. This is random, by the way. Uh, each time you play the game, you, you'll see different moves. Uh, but you can overpower him, and to overpower him, you need to drag your character over here. Like So I always use this because, I don't know, it just looks... Looks like that's gonna that would be what I would do. Now, he will attack with, ten, with 9, so he will basically waste... Uh, all of your power over here, all of your attack power, not all of it, but like half of it, uh, and take no damage, I believe, but I'm gonna defend, so I'm gonna take, he said, he told us to defend, so I'm gonna take one point of damage right there. You defend yourself again, building up your power for n the next turn. The Sight Master Sergeant attempts a strong attack, but you receive only a small amount of damage. He will be weaker now, so his next attack will be lower. Now, his next attack will never be above half of his strength, according to what I know, because he just used... No, he just 
we use half of his strength. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, my next attack, he says, will be of medium strength. So he'll go all out with his next attack. The thing about this is you can just wait out a little bit and he's going to go like probably like three or four uh, and he's going to get tired a little bit more. The, and you can conserve your strength and next turn you attack him with full strength and he's not going to be able to defend unless he defends, in which case he only takes one point. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm probably going to do three points of damage. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it went half. So he's basically wasting himself. And there we go. That was the end. You play a strong attack overpowering the Sightmaster Sergeant he bows, and you uh, you have finished me. Excellent. Uh, st one stamina lost, skilled sword play. That was actually the best attempt that I did, and uh, up here you can see his life. I didn't, I wasn't looking at that, so I could have. That was a pretty easy decision. You seem to remember the basics, the sergeant says breathlessly. Good. Another round? Nah, it's enough, it enough training. You shake your head. Very good, the sergeant agrees, but if you wish about in earnest, then I warn you, I will not go easy on you. He indicates the wider yard there, uh, where there is space for a true match. Yes, we could go there. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, if you click on yourself, uh, you, you see the text that you just read. Now, this thing here in the middle, it's the, um, it's, I don't, I've never used it, but I know it works. Oh, there it is. So, it's the, yeah, you can see your path, and you can, you know, basically you can, it's like a, a save game system, but it works like a rewind something sort of thing. Uh, and it's uh, it's going to be what we're going to use when we die. Because there there is... You'll see. You'll see. So let's go up there. No, I don't want to do that. Let's, yes, drag and go. You head over to the yard to practice a bout of real fighting. The sergeant removes a cl the cloth padding from the base of his staff and sheath the sword. This time I will, net, I will not let my inten uh, tell you my intentions, he says. You will have to read them for yourself. Be ready. Now, the first attack he does, uh, since we know his strength, I think I'm going to go with full power. Because I believe it's more probable that he's not going to go with full power right off the bat. And even if he does, we're going to go into a stalemate. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I didn't take any damage because I overpowered him. The sight, the sight master smiles at you, raises his staff in salute, and readies his stance. You feel the weight of your sword, then bring it up to deliver a mighty stroke. Like a woodsman cleaving a tree, the sight master sergeant comes in with his strongest, most forceful attack. You smile as your own blow triumphs and sinks deep. The sight master shakes his head. Not bad, he grunts, clearly weakening. Uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna defend right now. Hopefully he defends as well. Now, the fa because he's got more strength than I have because he didn't go with full one. Let's defend here. He didn't defend. That's great. So I only took one stamina damage. You drop yourself into a crouch. His light blow sails over your head. His eyes follow your shoulders. He's probably about to defend himself. You realize a strong hit would be wasteful. Now, when you notice that an enemy is going to de defend themselves, you just need to go with point one, And you're going to do one point of damage. Because that's zero. You overpower him and he can't, you can't do less than one. Time to attack. You sting you, you sting him with your blade, low and fast, saving your energy. I'll wear you out, you declare. His own weapon is raised in defense. He smiles. His breath begins to heave. He is struggling to stay upright. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's, I'm not really sure if this is the best course of action. But any attack here is that I win. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't actually think of... How much stamina he had. Relentlessly you cut and thrust, keeping him pinned. You rush forward with a deep, heavy slash. It is enough to finish him. The sight master throws down his staff. You have me, he declares with a grin. And one stamina lost, skilled, full, skilled sword at play. And yes, he didn't, doesn't actually get lost. The So... The sergeant is gasping for breath. He bows to you once more. Excellent, he declares. Few men have ever bested me. You are truly, uh, you truly are Annalan's best hope. As he talks, a nearby healer hurries over with a solve and your health, and the sergeant is quickly restored. Good. Let's get our, uh, let's get our spell book over there. It's gonna be important because magic is another interesting thing in in this game. It doesn't work like any of the. Pen and, that pen and paper, the books that I've played myself from the fighting fantasy thing, so I don't know if this is an adaptation from the real thing, or if it's made up, or what. One of the uh, one of the huts, set slightly back from the others, is decorated with glyphs and strange symbols. A terrible smell emanates from its doorway. This is the hut of the chief mage. He has been preparing your spell book for days, reading star charts uh, to work out which spell will be available to you in the different locations in the hills and beyond. Uh, yes, I want to go inside. 
You lift the flap and go inside. The mage looks up at you with his with haggard, sleepless eyes and presses the book into your hands. Do you understand how to use this? He asks. N tell me. Each spell is crafted through the alignment of three stars. He begins. The spell Zap, for example, is made by aligning Zarathustra, Aegis, and Pini. But uh, that is not important. What matters is that the spell is what the spell is called and what it does. Zap will give you control over lightning. Hot will create a fireball. Foff will create a force field around you. Shall I continue? Yeah, tell me more. Okay, so Zap is pretty. Um, is pretty. That's that's gonna be useful. Hot is create a fireball. This you need to be careful with this magic sometimes. It's it's actually pretty cool when you fail the magic. But let's just tell me more. Uh, the mage nods. The law spell is formed from Lilith, Aegis, and Wax, and it will allow you to control the willing of unintelligent creatures. The law. Okay, I need, I need to remember that. The wall spell is quite different and uses different stars. The order, uh, the order matters, you see. Wall creates an invisible barrier. You will find the rest in the book. He adds, stepping the leather-bound volume. Uh, I want to know more, though. The mage looks surprised. Well... Dop spell is useful for locks. Walk will shield you in battle, and dumb will cause clumsiness. He scratches absolutely at his ear. Uh, remember, some spells will cost your you effort to use, but the ones that don't will not work without a focus, an item of some kind. You will need to read the book to know the what. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's research the magic book right now. So the magic book is actually a pretty interesting thing. Or the magic mechanics are is a pretty interesting thing. So you'll see that it's it's you don't need to type these. The game gives you the options because, as you saw, uh, as you as we read, uh, some stars will not align correctly for you to be able to cast these. So you you're gonna be given a choice at the start of each spelling uh, of of each uh, casting sequence. You're given like for example, you can be given a Z and an F. And that will mean that you only really have two uh, two spells to cast from this. Of course, there's a lot of them. There's Zap, Hot that we have seen, Foff, Wall, Law, and Dumb. Dumb. It, why is it? Um, it might be just two things. Uh, we got Big that transforms into a into a giant. I think when the spell is cast, the caster's own body will inflate the body of th to three times normal size. We got Walk. That's the shield one. It does require a coin though, or one stamina. Is that how it works? If you have a coin, if you use a gold piece, I think that's how it works. Uh, the dot will open locks, I believe, uh, and Raz requires beeswax. To perform this spell, beeswax, beeswax is required. By rubbing the wax on any bladed weapon and casting this spell, the blade will become razor sharp and do at least double its normal damage. That's pretty cool. Sus, uh, yeah, we're gonna go through these spells. Um, I'm gonna go through them off camera, though, to get um, acquainted with them a little bit better. So, the, this one... Uh, suspects a trap and will indicate uh, telepath telepathically to the caster the danger and the best protective action. Actually, this one is good in some situations. Uh, in most situations, actually, because it's just like premonition sort of thing. Uh, six is uh, casts onto the spell's own body and creates multiple images of the caster, all capable of casting spells and attacking. Each will perform identical actions and most creatures will be unable to tell which is the real figure. That's pretty cool. Uh, this one requires a bamboo flute. We're gonna need these, though. Uh, we're gonna need to know which ones require what, uh, because there's a lot of them. As you saw at the beginning, we have a lot of spells, like 48 or something. So it is a lot, <laughs> uh, but it's not gonna be as complex as as it might seem right now. So let's go approach the great the gate and begin our adventure. You reach the foot of the mighty gate. It is sealed. The sergeant places one hand on the wood. The gate has been locked for some time to deter raiders, he tells you. But you will have no difficulty. The star in this place allows the dub spell to be crafted. And he stands back. Let's cast the spell. Okay. And I was telling you about that, but the game just gave us the chance to do that. And here, you can uh, click any of the thing. You can click D right there. You can go back and go with a hot if you want. You can cast a fireball on that. And of course, you can see here the game doesn't let us cast anything else apart from the hot. So let's disable that, and let's go into the D. Oh. What's... No, that's not it. Dop. There it is. Yeah, did I... What, what did I do there? Open locks and doors, and requires one stamina. So it's a nice, interesting way to cast spells. It forces you to remember which ones are which, but it ultimately tells you what they do and, you know, how they work, so... It's 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 an interesting mechanic, and it forces you to know your magic, which is pretty good. 
You weave the spell. One by one, the great tumblers of the door begin to creak and groan. Then the hinges turn. With a noise like hail on a canvas roof, the, these gates have not opened since our last champion was lost, the sergeant says. I wish you more luck than he. Perhaps you will even meet him on your travels. Yeah, I, f I fear he might be dead, though. I'm sure he's dead, say, I, I say. The sightmaster nods, peering at something on the horizon. I believe he is returning, but transformed. I hope you do not meet the same fate. He stands back from you. Oh. Is he coming? Okay, center the gate. Together you step into the shadow of the wall. One last word, he declares. When you have the crown, find the highest point you can find. We will be watching. Watching from where? From here, the sight master warrior, uh, the sight master warriors are selected from birth from their incredible for their incredible powers of telescopic vision. You cannot help but wonder how far he can see. Oh man, that's that's gotta be useful. That's amazing. Uh, tell me what lies ahead. This path leads first to Canton Cantapani, a settlement of traders. Though most are rogues and thieves, you should be you should be there before the sun has reached its peak. From there, three routes lead on to Kristan Tanti, but no single route is safe. Kakabad is a land of devils. And beyond Kare? I cannot see so far, he says, but once you have crossed the city port of traps, you will enter the backlands. They say that day and night there are controlled by forces other than the sun, and from Kare too, your progress will be watched. It is time to go, striding away you pass through the gate. The face of the folk watching your departure reveals the hopes that rest on you and your quest. The early morning air is crisp, and the rising sun paints the slopes in shades of peaceful beauty, concealing the evil that lies ahead. Mm-hmm. Into Kakarad, or whatever that was called, we go. We can actually zoom back, and I'll zoom back in a little bit. The path winds through slopes of wild scrubland. The countryside is deserted, and the eerie silence is broken only by the cawing of the occasional crow. There is a spell for hearing what they say, but you do not have the equipment it requires. The birds appear to pause in the air to examine you as they pass. They make you uneasy, as if you were an intruder in their presence. Barely an hour beyond the wall, and the air begins to growl, grow foul. The Shamutanti hills are infested with the pestilence of the backlands. It saps the energy from your body, leaving you feeling nauseous and weak. Indeed it does. Um, let's cover my mouth. You cover your mouth with your neck scarf, but it does no good. They warned you of, of this. You will grow accustomed to it the longer you are out here. But for the moment, you must be very careful. So, my maximum stamina just decreased. You can see your stamina. Yeah, I know what it is. If it reaches zero, you'll be too tired to carry on. Stamina can be regained up to the maximum by eating rations or rest. Okay, well, resting is going to be good. So, we could go across... I can... Yeah, there it is. The, the zoom back works weird because I need to zoom up to zoom back let's see can I uh, how do I yeah there is I right click to look at the map and let's look at the map so we came from Analand the northern passage over here this is the wall that protects Analand or I think protects Analand from um, the Shamutanti Hills which are these I suppose uh, and we have the Kakabad Sea which I don't know what it means but oh I just double clicked double right clicked okay now I know that uh, that's pretty cool. Look at that t the tail right there. That is pretty awesome. And the north, does that's not north. That's that's pretty awesome, actually. I like that. I like maps that don't point north as normal, because it kind of forces you to think a little bit more, and it, it it's how maps used to be made, depending on, of course, who made them. B like, centuries ago, they didn't really care about the north too much, the magnetic one, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, it's basically... Even to this day, there's still a, a, a reason for these maps to exist. Uh, but I think there's a little bit of 3D here. I'm looking at that hill. Yes, there. I think so. I think there's a little bit of 3D. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is. Just a tiny little bit. But anyway, we got a two choices ahead of us. We can't really do anything else. We, uh, I think we can go cross-country, but, uh, like, around or something. But I don't, I don't want to try it right now. Let's see. So I can, I, because I don't want to rewind. So I can travel cross-country or a low rise over here directly to there. And since I am right at the beginning of this quest, I don't think the game is going to kill me. <laughs> Famous last words, huh? Famous last words. The path through Cantonapi is long and winding and will lose you a day. Instead, you turn off the path and strike north through the knee-high grass. The journey starts with a stiff climb that takes several hours. 
But from the top, you have a good view of a plain of yellow grass, and just to the north of that, a little village of rude huts that do not look like human dwellings. To your left, the gigantic wall looms, throwing shadows that lap at your feet. Hmm, let's look back at the wall. Casting a glance up at its height, you see a familiar figure with his, his arms raised. He can see you, of course, and he's standing on the battlement so he can watch your progress. Time to strike on, then. The wind whispers through the long grass, beckoning you onwards. But there might be rats and worse in those fields, so you might be safer cutting across the river and following the bank. Okay, so I kind of wanted to go to that village right there. I'm not... I think that's... Uh, I think from there we could go this way. Uh, and yeah, basically the game is meant to be replayed because you can, it can you basically you're cutting yourself out of content each time you make a decision. Uh, so let's see, we got, well, we got the end of the episode because we are out of time. But let's see, we got longer grass this way. There might be rats. That's an interesting one. Or the river bank. I think I might go to the river bank and uh, and see how things go. But for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery with an exclamation mark. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, uh, for lots of RPG goodness and other games that I play as well. But above all, above everything else, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.